hope that uh, you can hear me uh, correctly. Uh, I am Marie-Pierre Ballarin. I am a researcher in history at the Institute of Research for Development and a specialist of East Africa and the Western Indian Ocean. Since uh, 2017, I am coordinating the project SLAFNET, Slavery in Africa, a dialogue between Europe and Africa, that has for main goal to establish a scientific network of several institutions and uh, research groups from Europe and Africa in the field of slavery studies. But our objective also is uh, to think together on the legacies of slavery and slave trade in our societies. Thanks to the initiative of Arsita Actors, Director of the Cultural Affairs of the Alliance Française in Nairobi and her team, Sabrine Tedesi, Baldrin Ambali, David Amolo, 
you have been able to watch the first two episodes of the documentary Slaves Roots, which traces the histories of slavery and slave trade since medieval times. I would like also to thank Cédric Torisson, the director of the Alliance Française, and Alice Fardel and the Company des Fars et Baleines, uh, Balise, pardon, sorry, producer of the documentary, which graciously authorized uh, this screening. Tonight, we have the privilege of welcoming four of the contributors to the documentary, among them, um, Juan Gilas, who is one of the film directors, thanks Juan. Hello. We have also with us uh, Professor Salah Trabelzi, who is uh, teaching history at the Université Lumière in Lyon 2, and uh, who is specialist of the Arab Muslim uh, world during modern times. Uh, we should have uh, Professor Shuki Helamel, who is very far from us in Arizona, and I hope he will be able to join us. Uh, is uh, also an historian, specialist of West and Northwest Africa, and looks uh, at issues such as power, slavery, race, gender, and social justice in the Islamic world. And finally, we welcome also Professor Antonio Dalmeda, who is specialized in slavery and slave trade of early modernity and the history of the Atlantic. I really thank you all of you to be with us tonight. So firstly, I'm going to give uh, the, them the floor so that they can share their experience and help us to reflect on the question at the heart of this debate. Then I will communicate to them with the help of Arsita and Sabrine, the questions that came up following these projections, and I'm sure they will do their best to answer. So dear Johan, since uh, you are the one who is starting, please, why it is so important to tell the history of slavery today. Thank you. Thank you, my Pierre, and uh, hello to everyone. It's a real pleasure to have you all here in this uh, uh, very strange and particular time. So it's, it's a great way to, uh, to get together. I think this is one of the intention that uh, when we started uh, thinking about making these films uh, together here in, in, in Paris, the, the whole team that made the film, um, to create dialogue and communication was probably the first uh, intention. Um, I'm going to answer in a roundabout way uh, to this question. I think uh, making a film about over a 12, 13, 14th century of history in one series, um, our intention was to talk about the world today. Um, there has been many documentaries made uh, by all over the world um, on various aspects of the history of the slave trade and, of, and on slavery. Uh, I think uh, a lot of them uh, have a look at the history of, uh, in, in segments or in a, with a very national prism. Usually you're looking at their whole, the, 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 how the history relate to their own history. We wanted to do a, a global look first. That was the first thing. Uh, so throughout the world and throughout in the long, uh, using the long time of history to, to look at this uh, systemic, this system of trade. Um, but really uh, also when, when, when we were thinking about making this, this film uh, originally, um, a lot of the work in, in television and in documentary has been made tend to kind of place um, the history of the slave trade and of slavery in the past. Like it's a separate part of, of, of the world history and somehow we moved on. Um, and we thought differently. We thought by making a film that attempt to have a, a look at the system of trade uh, that was created, the, the system of trading human beings um, throughout time and which, which took many different kind of uh, facets, but nevertheless was one system of trading human beings throughout the globe. Um, we, we think that it created, um, created a world, it created economies, it created spaces, it created new territories, it created new relationship between people. And, uh, and all of these, 
this, this, these economies, these relationships, these spaces, we are all, um, we are all, excuse me, uh, we're bearing the legacy of it or the heritage, if you want, of, of this. So this is in a quick sentence why we made we we attended to 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 travel throughout the world and we were quite surprised when we finished making these four films it's only four hours uh um it never been done before in form of a, in form of documentary um a, an attempt to look at the whole system um i think i think we can stop there and then we, we we'll go into question later on yeah Okay, many thanks, Juan, for your uh, input. Uh, Salah, could you please uh, tell us what uh, the what about uh, uh, teach and um, disseminate this history of slavery today in our societies? So my apologies to speak in French. Uh, alors, uh, je commencerai d'abord par remercier Juan et toute son équipe, Fari, Balise, d'avoir eu cette, cette initiative inédite hein, donc, qui euh, a consisté à porter donc, euh, au regard euh, et de façon comparative donc, ce phénomène transnational qui, 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 qui remonte bien sûr à l'Antiquité et qui, qui aujourd'hui impacte donc, toujours nos sociétés. Euh, alors, l'importance d'en de, de, parler euh, aujourd'hui, c'est que l'esclavage a été un phénomène donc, euh, qui, qui s'est déployé dans la violence et dans le viol des droits les plus élémentaires donc, de l'être humain. Euh, et puis, parce que euh, aujourd'hui, euh, Parler de l'esclavage, c'est aussi une façon donc de porter sur le, le je veux dire sur la de nouveau la question des droits, puisque la plupart des descendants d'esclaves aujourd'hui se trouvent dans des situations de déni donc de droit, et c'est aussi un combat. Donc, au-delà, bien sûr, du travail historique, au-delà du travail donc, intellectuel, c'est un combat pour réintégrer ces franges, euh, aujourd'hui, qui euh, souffrent encore, non seulement du traumatisme donc, qui avait frappé les générations précédentes, mais aussi euh, parce que si l'on jette un simple regard sur euh, ces franges donc, euh, et ces descendants d'esclaves, on les trouve essentiellement, euh, alors du moins d'après ce que je sache personnellement, hein, donc quand on regarde les sociétés arabes ou musulmanes aujourd'hui, se sont encore des pauvres parmi les plus pauvres, ce sont encore des gens qui sont marqués par le, la stigmatisation et, donc, et, 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 le, et le reniement, et, et, et cela me semble en effet essentiel hein, d'aborder cette question-là et de l'aborder à partir justement de cet impératif comparatif puisque cela nous permet d'élargir le regard et d'introduire à la fois des éléments donc communs, mais aussi de voir les différences entre les différentes formes d'esclavage dans les différentes aires culturelles et dans les différents espaces et les différentes chronologies. Euh, voilà les éléments donc qui, qui me paraissent essentiels. Donc, ce sont des éléments intellectuels, des éléments donc socioculturels. Et aujourd'hui, bien sûr, il y a une question juridique concernant les droits, une question économique aussi, parce que justement l'esclavage a été, comme le montre donc, euh, manifestement le, 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 les quatre épisodes donc, de, de ce, ce film, il a été à l'origine, bien sûr, de notre monde moderne et de cette accumulation donc, capitaliste qui a permis aujourd'hui, en effet, à la fois euh, donc, de voir naître dans les temps médiévaux ou dans l'Antiquité, des empires et des empires puissants, et puis par la suite, bien sûr, d'avoir abouti donc, à l'émergence de ce capitalisme donc, qui, aujourd'hui, continue en effet à euh, puiser et à profiter de cette accumulation qui s'est faite, bien sûr, euh, 
sur la base du travail et de, 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 de l'exploitation en effet de ces hommes comme énergie essentielle pour justement l'économie et pour les sociétés et pour le colonialisme. Voilà ce que je dirais donc a priori, hein, euh, ce qui expliquerait de mon point de vue en effet l'importance de parler et d'en parler toujours en effet et encore de cette, ce traumatisme et de cette, 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 cette ignominie en effet qui a mar, marqué nos sociétés humaines. Okay. Many thanks, uh, Salah. Uh, Juan, maybe you could help us for the translation? Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you very uh, much. yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I'm just thank you. I'm going to summarize a little bit. Uh, sorry, Salah. Um, first, I'd like to thank the production team to do this, uh, to have put together a, quite a, a new way to look at, at this history because the fact that this project is transnational, mm. it's comparative. Um, allows us to see in the history what are the common points and also what are the differences. Uh, what I would like, what I would say to start is that slavery um, deploy itself as a system through violence, primarily, and through the violation of human rights. Why is it important to talk about uh, this history and of, uh, to talk about slavery today? Uh, it's because when we talk about this, we're talking about rights, and we realize that the descendants of the former slaves throughout the world are usually also um, have inherited of uh, the the trauma of the history, but also are in a social position of poverty and of rights deprivation. Uh, and if we look at the um, Arab or Muslim societies, we could say that the descendants of, of former slaves are the poor of the poor and uh, the human rights need to be defended. So um, talking about the history um, uh, allows us to, to look at, the, at, at, at these uh, fringes of population that exist throughout the world in Africa and in other continents. Um, clearly, uh, this varied history has created many empires, also had created a, an accumulation of wealth, uh, unprecedented, um, uh, somehow it's at, at the root of capitalism as well, and uh, we can see that this accumulation of wealth has profited to some, and uh, in the world today, we can see that uh, Um, it has allowed the people who have accumulated the wealth to still be uh, the, mo the, mo the most powerful people and to still exploit uh, the wealth of, the, of, of other places in the world. In a few words, I hope, Salah, I said, I uh, resume your thoughts correctly, but that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah, much that. Much. Yeah. Okay. Many thanks, Juan, uh, and then I will give the floor to Antonio. Uh, so, Antonio, what uh, about the, the story of slavery in, uh, in, uh, nowadays? Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, thanks so much. I will, I, will, yeah, I will speak in English, and if I'm not able to speak in English, I will switch to French, and thank you, Juan, at the same time. But I will speak very slowly. Um, what I would like to say, it's, in my opinion, it's the first time that we can have a global vision and an and alternative history of the slavery. I think it's very important. When I say it's the, an alternative history and a global vision, it's that the, the film and that uh, Juan realized take in consideration the diversity of the world. And I think it's very important. It's not an history you become, who becomes with Europe. It's the history of the diversity of the world. And all the world was linked. And this, what you can see with these four pictures, it's that we are not in front of one history, but in front of histories, which is very important. It's not only an history who becomes, who starts with Europe. It's the history of the modern time of our world and our societies. So uh, what is important for the present in this history? I think, as a historian, this is 
how can you think about this history from the present? This is very important. It's in the first time an inhuman or inhuman history, which is the slave trade. And we, we have to think about that. What is the slave trade? It's numbers is to reduce a, a woman and a man to a merchandise and to a machine in the plantations. But it's at the same time, an human history. It's the history of humans who become slaves because we, are, we, we become a slave. We are not born a slave. They become a slave and they have a status in the societies where they arrived and the, where they're deported. So I think it's very important to think this history from our present and to see as historian, what was this history? Inhuman history and human history. And at the same time, it's the second point. It's important to think this history for the present, from the present and for the present. For the present, it's the question of the memories. And these memories are present on all cities, all the cities about on the world. This is the question of the heritage and the question of the race. What is race? <laughs> race didn't exist, but race was a word was employed to reduce people to a biologized category. So I think these two points are important. They are important as an historian to explain how it was possible. And is it important for the present as a citizenship to think what are the perpetuations of this history, the continuities for the present and for the future? Thank you so much. Thank I'm, you very much. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, no, you need to translate. No, it's okay. No, I think it, uh, you were very clear. Every, everything is fine. Uh, thank you very much, Antonio. So then we can start the discussion. So we will start with the question uh, from Tandeka Sibilla, who is uh, asking uh, regarding the title of the webinar, Isn't the World Story Watering Down the Severity of Slavery? Est-ce que finalement ça ne le minore pas cette histoire, ce nom? Euh, Juan, tu veux intervenir? Um, yeah, the, the words are complicated. Uh, I think I can only tell you about um, how we went about uh, deciding how to make this film. I think then the other people can give their, 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 their views on it. Um, we took from start point the fact that um, the slave trade and slavery that, that, that went with it uh, is a crime, is a crime against humanity. And there's no discussion for, for us, the authors of the film about that. But then we thought, then now to move on to try to look at the system that allowed these crimes, these many, many crimes to be perpetrated throughout centuries by different societies, by different actors. Let's have a let's try to not to put on the side the moral aspect of, 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 of the crime, but look, let's look at the elements of the that, uh, that that made the crime possible and and let's look at the system that allowed many people that knew what was going on. That, that I remember during one of the interviews with one of the historians in the film saying like, let's, for example, in, in, in Great Britain, in the ports, everybody knew about the slave trade, even if they hadn't met an African or an enslaved African uh, being European in the 18th century. But they said like, so, for us, it was important to go, not leave the moral aspect and the violence of it. And I think we tried to kind of, we tried to kind of uh, explain, not to justify, but to explain how the violence was used as a mean also for this system. But uh, I think after that, yeah, it's, it's not a story like you tell a bedside story. But um, like I said, words are, are complicated, but I think the, what we're trying to talk about is, is definitely not to uh, minimize uh, the crime. Thank you very much, Juan. Uh, Antonio, Salah, would you like to react? 
Salam, Aïlé, Antonio euh, Oui, euh, tout simplement et brièvement, c'est qu'il s'agit euh, là d'un système, un système de prédation et d'un système de rapine qui euh, s'est étendu sur plusieurs siècles, euh, voire même euh, plus d'un millénaire, hein, euh, et qui euh, avait euh, conduit à ce crime abominable, hein, donc, euh, qui, 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 qui porte ce nom donc, terrible, à travers la traite et à travers l'asservissement de ces masses de gens venus donc, de, 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 de toutes parts, euh, il me semble que cela, le mérite de ce, 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 ce documentaire, c'est d'avoir euh, montré, euh, du moins, euh, en ce qui concerne certaines régions où le tabou est très fort encore aujourd'hui, où l'oubli est, 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 est institué, il est institutionnalisé même, hein, puisque euh, le déni frappe toujours justement euh, cette mémoire cette histoire, et quand on regarde, ne serait-ce qu'autour de nous, hein, dans, les, dans, les, dans le champ des études historiques, dans le champ des études sociologiques ou anthropologiques, très peu de choses hein, euh, ont été faites jusqu'à euh, ne serait-ce que le début de, 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 de l'an 2000. Alors, pour le reste du monde arabe, encore aujourd'hui, justement, cette question-là, elle n'est nullement abordée, nulle part, et dans presque aucune des universités arabo-musulmanes. Yeah. Juan, I give you the flow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there is no question of minimizing any of the of the of the violence of the of that history. Um, I think again, uh, if I can say that what the film attempted to do quite well was to put in light a system of predation. That went on over a millennium really i mean uh, like a thousand years um you have to realize that uh the and it lifted the veil on um, a very taboo history in some parts of the world this history is, this history is still very uh totally taboo to the point that this um taboo maybe the the proper word would be denial and this is it's denied uh, institutionally. Uh, I would say that um, in, in my field of research, uh, being a historian, um, very little was done about it up until we could say even the, the year 2000. And uh, in many of the, the Arab countries, um, this history is not taught at all and is not researched at all. So uh, clearly there's no intention of minimizing any of it. Antonio, do you wish to react as well? Yes, maybe just a few words. Uh, just to say that, how can you say that? Mondialization and migration, it's an old history. But I think what is different with the slave trade and the African slave trade, it's the long duration of the processes, which is very important, this long duration, because we have this symbology or these synonyms between black and slave, which is a construction, but which is a construction who is, is still present in all today. So, mondialization, it's a whole processus. The circulation, it's a whole processus, but the history of the Africans or the Atlantic slave trade and the African slave trade, it's something new by the long duration of this history and this permanence in the present. So we are still in this history, which is very, which, which is very important. It's not only one migration in other migrations. It's a peculiar migration, forced migration. Yeah, yeah. There is no way that we will minimize the yeah. this history, even if if the damn story can be a bit short. I should say. So uh, next uh, question from a mark and uh, it is an interesting one to the team that made the documentary was there a time when you were in, a, uh, in an argument on what should be put on the documentary yeah, so it is really on the making of the film i should say yeah and, uh, okay thank you um i think that's a, also a good moment to say that this film was made by many people um it was a uh, three uh 
authors that I wrote, if you want, constructed the film. Um, two directors, myself and, and somebody else. Um, a very important producer. Um, I'm saying that because I think it helps you understand also how the film came uh, came together. We came, we all we all come from that team and around those four, three, four people essential. After that, a production team of about 15 people in France. And if you count all the people we work with um, around the world, uh, arranging the shoots and stuff, that's over 50 or 60 people that worked on the series, um, maybe more. Uh, but we, the, the few people that wrote and, 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 and devised the, the, the film on where we wanted to go, what we wanted to talk about, um, yeah, we had many fights, I'm, I'm not sure. We had many discussions, many kind of like, we, we all came to this uh, history uh, from different points of view. Uh, I'm a white European, a white French man, has lived in, in, in the UK for half his life. Uh, the producer is, uh, from, the Carib is a French Carib from the Caribbean, black Caribbean uh, woman. The two other directors that worked on the film are uh, Afro-Europeans, uh, one from Ivory Coast and the other one um, from Zambia. So we, I'm saying that because, and we all work together to put this film together. And so we all came in with different baggage, uh, different perspectives. Um, so there, there's many, many things, many points that we had to, we, did, we discovered, but we didn't know about it before we started researching. Now, and also this hard, what I was saying before, this quite hard look to say, yes, the morals, it is terrible, but now let's look at the system. Who pays, who, who, who gets the money, who, where does the money go, where, what's happening with the money? What is the system of terror? To what use is, it, is, it, is, is this terror being used, et cetera, et cetera. So, these were difficult conversations among, among, among us. Some, some of us uh, slave descendants, some of us probably descendants of masters. Um, I would say one thing, uh, the discussion on the reparation was very strong because um, it's a very sensitive subject in, in France. Uh, it's very sensitive for many French people. For, we're not gonna talk about it tonight, but. I think it is quite sensitive for quite a lot of uh, Westerners and Europeans, Americans or Europeans. Um, I'm from a perspective that we should enter the conversation on reparation fully um, and then discuss what the reparation uh, will be. But th so that was a, that was a point of, of strong discussion. How do we integrate the element of uh, the discussion, the debate, and which is very strong in the world uh, the, the, all the Caribbean states, for example, have got a 10-point platform asking reparation for the slave trade. Um, but yeah, that probably was one, one of the points where we had the most kind of like, and we, at the end in the film, it appears in, the, in several places uh, where the notion of how can we repair a crime is put into light. Thank you very much, Juan. Uh, Salah Antonio, would you, like, uh, would you like to share with us your point of view? <laughs> Salah, do you want to react? So, qu'est-ce qui était le point? Est-ce qu'à un moment donné, vous avez eu des discussions très uh, motivées, on va dire, uh, vives sur certains points du sujet du documentaire? No. Uh... Oui, on a eu des questions, bien sûr, assez vives hein, sur euh, la... Alors, pas au sein du, 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 de l'équipe elle-même, hein, mais donc c'est par la suite. Euh, alors, moi, j'ai eu des retours euh, de la part de certaines personnes, en effet, qui estimaient que euh, l'objectif euh, était, en quelque sorte... Euh, atteint, hein, donc dans, 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 dans le sens où euh, on a parlé de façon euh, claire et euh, convaincante, hein, justement, de cette, cette, euh, ce drame hein, donc, humain, euh, 
mais en même temps, on a eu des réactions paradoxales de certaines personnes qui estimaient qu'on n'avait pas assez mis l'accent sur la diversité des esclaves. Alors, notamment, dans les, les, les... c'est-à-dire entre le haut Moyen-Âge et le bas Moyen-Âge, où l'esclavage euh, impliquait des sociétés au-delà de l'Afrique elle-même. Euh, cela touchait bien sûr aux, aux esclaves européens, aux esclaves donc, de l'Asie centrale ou aux esclaves donc, de l'Europe du Nord, aux, es, aux esclaves russes. Euh, et que euh, pour certains, donc, on avait en quelque sorte omis cette diversité-là, cette diversité humaine donc, de, 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 des groupes euh, qui avaient subi justement cette, ces, 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 ces traitements euh, de, et puis cette prédation. Et puis une dernière question, c'est la question de la réparation hein, donc, qui a été abordée tout à l'heure. Euh, alors, cette problématique, elle est posée aussi au sein de, notamment des pays arabes, euh, puisque jusqu'à nos jours, dans aucun pays arabe et musulman, il n'existe, enfin, vous n'existez jusqu'au mois de janvier cette année, donc à le moindre, euh, la moindre manifestation et la moindre reconnaissance hein, de, euh, de la mémoire de, euh, de l'esclavage. Alors, c'est pour la première fois dans l'histoire de la Tunisie où un, un décret donc, avait été euh, pris cette année pour considérer, donc, en effet, le jour du 23 janvier donc, comme étant un jour commémoratif pour l'esclavage. Autrement, par ailleurs, c'est ne serait-ce que cette revendication-là, c'est cette reconnaissance de la dignité donc de tous ces esclaves qui avaient été victimes hein, de ce, 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 ce phénomène euh, donc odieux, euh, et puis euh, la reconnaissance aujourd'hui de la diversité de la société et des sociétés arabes. Quand on regarde aujourd'hui, ne serait-ce que les sociétés maghrébines, hein, euh, et puis surtout euh, leur africanité, surtout la présence aujourd'hui en effet d'une population importante donc euh, issue de l'esclavage, euh, voilà, donc c'est un débat aujourd'hui en effet qui, 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 est en, qui est mis en avant euh, et qui euh, a trouvé dans ce, justement, dans ce, ce, ce documentaire et à travers l'évocation justement de cette problématique-là, donc le moyen bien sûr de relancer le débat et de relancer de, justement ces mouvements de revendication. Juan, please. Juan, we, we can't hear you. Pardon, um, uh, sorry about that. I unmuted. Uh, what I can talk about is the feedback that we got, um, uh, what I got as a historian that took part in the film. Um, many people said that the, the, the aim of the film was, was uh, obtained, uh, talking about the diversity, the length, and the importance of that history. But I also had... Um, Some people are saying that we didn't, in the well, the film, the, the films didn't uh, look enough at the diversity of slavery, especially at the period of time of uh, of the, the 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 high Middle Ages, where slaves uh, would have come also from other parts of the world, not just from Africa. So they would have come from Europe. They would have come from let's say, Eastern Europe and Asia, uh, Slav countries and stuff. Um, so it was like a reproach saying, well, you only talked about a certain aspect of slavery. Uh, so that was, and then clearly there's still the point of reparation, uh, like it was mentioned by, by Juan previously, that is uh, it's still a very deep, uh, hot topic and a very strong debate in our societies. I could say that in no Arab and Muslim country uh, in the world up until last January, any, any sign of recognition of that, public sign of recognition of that history was, was, was actually done. Uh, it was only in Tunisia 
late last year that a decree was taken declaring that the 23rd of January, Salah, if I'm correct, uh, is now a day of commemoration of, of, of the slave trade. But in the rest of uh, the, the societies where the African side of society is a direct result of their history, there's still absolutely no discussion about uh, commemoration of the odious crime, but and let alone reparation. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Juan, for your help. And uh, Antonio, do you wish to react uh, on the, this issue? I think it is good to have uh, you, all of you, the, you, your point of view. <laughs> Maybe, a, yes, a few reflections. Um, <laughs> What is important for me, it's this, this picture, create a debate in Portugal and a great reflection in Portugal about the official history, because the history that I learned in Portugal, in France, is, it was not this history. <laughs> and the question is, all this slave trade, this history of slaves uh, can fit in the more glorious history of the discoveries. And there is a great debate in Portugal. Oh, you can put together these two histories who are opposite, which is a, an history of the discoveries <laughs> and the same time. What was the other side of the discoveries, which is the, this horrible slave trade and millions of, millions of people were carried by the Portuguese to bomb what they call the modern times. So I think it's, it was very important to have this reflection in Portugal. And maybe it was the first time that people just say, maybe you need to learn more about African history and not only to think about history as a part of the slave trade, but to think about what is this African history and not only a part of this world that the Portuguese discovered, but a part of the global world was built by, by this crime against the humanity. So I think there is a great reflection in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the things didn't change as, rap as soon as we want to change, but there is a start of reflection about what kind of history you have to write now to take in account all these worlds created by the European expansion and by the slave trade. Thank you very much, Antonio. I know that uh, the impact on the uh, on Portugal in Portugal was very strong of the second part of the the documentary. Uh, we have many questions actually, so um, I will take two. Uh, one from uh, Marie-Ange, who is uh, telling there is sometimes that the idea that the trafficking and deportation of African people through the slave trade have made African. Uh, the first globalized people. Would you comment on this? So this is for you. And then there is another one because uh, Marie-Ange also is uh, uh, raising this issue. So the other question is from uh, Gracia. The legacy of slavery and its impact on the histories of Africa, Europe and the Middle East is, in my opinion, far less appreciated and annihilated than it should be. I think that this is in part because of how history is taught. In your opinion, should this be changed? And if so, how? So it's raised the issue of the transmission and the teaching of this history. Uh, we had also uh, other questions who were saying that uh, the history is very few, uh, is very less taught in, in school in general. So I think we have two sides. Uh, um, did the Africans were the first globalized people and how to teach this history today? Mm. Uh, oui, please, Juan. Maybe I can, I can talk a little bit about, about the, the, the teaching aspect um, from a French perspective first. Um, the way the, 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 the history of the slave trade is taught in, in French schools uh, today is radically different from what it was when I was young, younger and when I was in school, uh, let's say 40 years ago, a bit more. Um, it, 
it's better. It's much, much better. Uh, or it is better because many historians, many uh, people um, involved have, have fought very hard for the for the programs, the the book, the books, and the for the school programs to change. And it was a very hard battle. And it's not; it's far from over. Uh, you, some of you might know that in France, in 2000, a law carried by uh, the Minister Christian Taubira declared um, uh, slavery a crime against humanity, which was in itself a very long political battle to arrive to that point. And then the article number two of that law said, number one was that uh, slavery is a crime against humanity. Number two is that that history has to be told in school all the way from primary school to university. And that started very committed the historians to work very hard to gradually change the, the manuals and the school books. And, and it's, a, it's a very, I mean, I talk about that because uh, maybe uh, Catherine Kokhrivridovich will be here next time on the second uh, webinar, but she was involved with other people in the rewriting of, of history books. And it's it's uh, uh, everyday battle. There are forces <laughs> in the in, in political forces and uh, reactionary forces that would like that 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 the history is not taught. That's that's in France, and I'm sure if you go anywhere else in the, in northern countries, but also if you go to places in Africa, there are a lot of people that will say, "Let's turn the page. Let's not talk about the past. This is reopening old wounds." We need to move on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think here there was a dis there was a political will at one point, and then the door was open, and then um, people moved in. So I think this battle has to be fought everywhere. I think it is changing gradually in in, in some places in Europe. But uh, what I can say is that um, it's it's, and I'm sure the other historians here today can talk about that in in other countries. It's, it's, you just have to keep fighting for it to be taught. Also, what we realized that is that many teachers didn't know that history at the yes. beginning. So it was very difficult for them to teach it to, 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 to their pupils because themselves hadn't been told. So they, they didn't know how to kind of uh, transmit it to, 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 to their pupils. So it's a, it's a complex subject where you have to First, teach the teachers, make the programs that so the teachers can really fully appropriate them, and then carry them to the to 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 the schools, and make films like we made. Yeah, thank you, Juan. It is true that uh, the issue of uh, the teachers uh, not having the materials to teach is a, a crucial one. Salah, do you want to add something? Oui, juste brièvement uh, par rapport à cette question. Euh, c'est que aujourd'hui il y a quand même pas mal de progrès qui ont été accomplis, euh, notamment donc euh, en France. Hein, on, on le voit dans les universités euh, par rapport à cette euh, problématique hein, et sans rapport avec le monde arabe ou l'histoire des pays musulmans. Euh, le problème, c'est que quand on jette le regard de l'autre côté de la Méditerranée, sur les pays, les pays du Maghreb ou les pays donc, du Proche-Orient, malheureusement, donc, la question est encore très marginalisée. Hein. Mais on assiste à quelques balbutiements, hein, puisque euh, on voit parmi les étudiants donc, qui arrivent en Europe aujourd'hui, euh, de plus en plus de jeunes qui cherchent à investir hein, donc, euh, cette, cette question et à, 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 à l'intégrer dans leur réflexion et... Euh, alors, on a quelques propositions de, de, de jeunes doctorants qui se proposent, en effet, de se lancer dans cette histoire donc, de l'esclavage ou de, 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 la, de, la, de la mémoire, hein, de, de la traite. Euh, alors, on a quelques étudiants qui ont brillamment fait euh, leur thèse et, leur, et, 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 et qui ont été publiées hein, donc, dans... Dans les, dernières, dans les dix dernières années. Et, et puis, on espère, en effet, que euh, par la suite, les programmes et euh, les, 
la politique éducationnelle dans les pays du Maghreb puisse intégrer donc progressivement donc cette question pour que les jeunes puissent être justement avertis et instruits sur cette problématique. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would start by saying progress has mm -hmm. has been made. It's like, like for, and Juan spoke about it, but like in France, for example, uh, where things are, are moving on and the quality of, of what's been taught is is uh, quite a lot better than it used to be. Um, and also, what we see is uh, quite a lot of young uh, people coming from the the Maghreb and from the, the Middle East that are coming, uh, for instance, to, to study in France and are they, uh, they, they want to work on that field. Um, some of them have been brilliantly published. Uh, let's say over the last 10 years, there's been an increasing number of people. Um, and some of them have been published and, and their work is becoming important. Uh, and now we, uh, we hope that this movement will become political so that um, gradually this is integrated in the school curriculum uh, so that the young people can become aware of their own history and, 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 and get educated. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Juan. Um, Antonio, do you wish to react? Um, yes, a few words, maybe the first question about Africans as a globalized people. Oui. Can you hear me? Yes, it's okay? For you? Yes, yes, it's fine. It's the question, how oh, Africans built uh, Americans, but always uh, European identities. I think it's very important to think about that it, in a positive way, which is the question of the music, the culture, the mestizage. And it's important to think that Africans and Africa is present in the European and American identities. And in, in the in the yes, positive way and in the worst way, which is the question of the representations and the racism, which is a legacy of this history. So yes, it's a globalized, first globalized people because what was linked with the slave trade, it's migrations of millions of people and new identities and new cultures. And the worst way, it's the representations and the racism, which is an er heritage of this history. After the, the question of the education, I think what is important in this way and what show the documentary is that we have to live from the question of slave trade as anonymous people, millions of people, and to build uh, lives of people and to, be, to, to let this question of the anonymous, the mass, the numbers, to go to identities, individual identities. Who were these people who were enslaved? What they become in these societies? And I think in this way now, we live from this global history of a passive people who was enslaved to identities where there is a resistance from these people who were enslaved. And these people were deported, are their own lives and their own identities in America, in North Africa, in Europe. And I think this part is very important. These people resist and these people have their own history after the slave trade. Juan? Oh, uh, I'm just agreeing. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Okay. So, so thanks, Antonio, because the, I think this issue of globalization is quite interesting because we have a, a, a question from David uh, who is saying, uh, sorry, minimizing or denying the past seems to be a key issue to justify globalization trends. How do past trade systems between Africa and Europe fit or not fit with current migration to Europe? And uh, we have another question uh, linked to this from Abdi Rashid. The current terror of African migrants, migrants fleeing via Libya with modern slave markets brings echoes of the slave trade that you your film explores. 
how do you analyze the current horrors and the other echoes of servitude and caste slavery in Mauritania and other North African nations? Do you need that? Uh, do you wish me to repeat one of the questions? Or oh, you are fine? I think I'm fine. Um, okay. Um, but I would say for that for us, it was, um, you know, we talked earlier on about the fact that we wanted the, the, the present and the past to, to, to live together in those films. And this is why we filmed today in, in uh, about 10 different countries around the world. Um, and we, we were criticized by some people uh, for adding uh, at the end of, of the first film uh, the footage of of, uh, of people migrating and uh, the prisoner camps in Libya and the slave markets and the slave auctions that were put on on international television at the time uh, by people saying this has got nothing to do um, with each other I think I let uh, we let the historians talk about that because uh, they have a clear point of view, I think, on, on, on the relationship between past history and present history. But for us, it was essential. For us, the link was, is very clear, uh, down to the roots that the people are taking, uh, to many of the reasons why people are migrating. Uh, and for us, it was essential that, 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 that these, these uh, two uh moments were put next to each other and then people can our role was also to make people think as filmmakers give some some keys some elements for understanding the history but also to challenge yourself into into the modern world so do i understand the, the world that is in front of me do i so is migration just migration Etc. Is my my town, my monuments are only monuments, or are they representing something else? So yeah, this is why we wanted these two things to coexist in the same space. Thank you very much, Sarah. I, I can see that you wish to share. Oui, je, je répondrai brièvement donc sur la une partie des questions, notamment justement l'horreur que nous avons vu à travers. Euh, ce, ce film donc, du marché euh, aux enchères en débit où, où on vendait donc, euh, des, des jeunes migrants euh, subsahariens, euh, je pense que qu'il ne s'agissait pas là d'un fait, fait divers, comme certains ont voulu en effet euh, le présenter euh, ainsi, euh, mais euh, cela montre, si vous voulez, euh, le, le, le caractère odieux et le caractère donc euh, terrible du silence qui a été fait sur la question de l'esclavage pendant euh, toutes ces décennies donc en arrière. Je pense que le, les migrations aujourd'hui subsahariennes vers le nord de l'Afrique réactivent en quelque sorte euh, ce phénomène et, et, et réactivent justement l'aspect la, euh, raciste et l'aspect donc euh, discriminant à l'égard d'une partie donc de la population et du monde africain. Euh, je crois que le problème c'est que dans beaucoup de pays euh, il n'y a pas eu d'abolition de l'esclavage, il n'y a pas eu de discussion, il n'y a pas eu de débat sur cette problématique-là et sur ce processus, en effet, d'intégration de, de, des Noirs et des descendants d'esclaves dans les sociétés arabes. Euh, un exemple, au niveau du Maroc, il n'y a jamais eu officiellement de décret d'abolition. L'esclavage est tendé en désuétude de lui-même. Euh, en Mauritanie, euh, au-delà, si vous voulez, de la loi d'abolition de 1989, qui a été par la suite relayé par deux autres lois donc criminalisant l'esclavage, nous savons que l'esclavage continue encore aujourd'hui à marquer la société, les sociétés mauritaniennes. 
Donc, on est aujourd'hui face à un problème qui, qui, qui n'est pas seulement lié au fait migratoire en soi, mais qui est lié à toute une histoire donc, qui remonte à des centaines d'années en arrière et surtout à cette histoire donc, du rapport de l'Afrique du Nord avec l'Afrique elle-même, c'est-à-dire du rapport des Nord-Africains avec leur propre identité et leur propre africanité. Et je crois que c'est là le problème, et c'est là le problème en effet donc, qui, qui, qui fait qu'un grand nombre aujourd'hui de migrants subsahariens ne pouvant plus et ne sachant plus comment rejoindre l'Europe, donc vont s'installer définitivement dans ces pays-là et il va falloir justement aujourd'hui, on effet trouver des moyens et trouver justement la, la, des politiques réelles d'intégration et d'insertion de ces populations dans ces sociétés arabes. Yeah, um, hold on, I'm just reading my notes. Yeah, going back, go, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, going back to this horrific film uh, that Juan mentioned, we, which was uh, a slave auction. Uh, this is not just uh, current affairs or just another news. For me, it shows, it really shows the silence um, That has, been, that has been going on for so long around our history and what it allows people uh, to do. Um, and these migrations from Sub-Saharan Africa towards the North has really reactivated um, the phenomenon of racism and discrimination. Um, but you have to know that in many countries in, in, uh, in the North of Africa, uh, there hasn't been, in many countries there hasn't been abolition of slavery. Um, I'll take an example. In Morocco, there's still to this day no decree of abolition. It has, slavery has, has disappeared gradually by itself. Uh, but it was never a, a discussion in the society. It was never a debate, let alone uh, proposing political solution to move on. Uh, in Mauritania, uh, there was the law of 1989 Um, which then further laws criminalize slavery, but we all know that uh, slavery still goes on. Um, I think what's happening now with this forced migration of of uh, of Africa of sub-Saharan, if I can use that word, uh, Africans towards the north, is that many of these young people now uh, don't go to Europe and they stay in the north of Africa, and it's putting us in front of Uh, new situation of how uh, these countries in the north of Africa will embrace their Africanness, and uh, and also how will how will they be able to put uh, politically situation to integrate these new population that are now coming and settling in and becoming uh, nationals as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juan. Uh, Antonio, uh, do you want to share results? And then after, I have also a comment for you. Okay. Um, the continuity between the slave trade and the migration, the modern migration, it's a very complex situation because at the same time, there is a continuity on the roots, on the violence or the image of violence that are showed on the TV, on the inhumanity. But the great difference is that on the slave trade, the frontiers were open to the slaves. And today, the frontiers are closed to the migrants. And one of these differences is on the, the question of the becoming of the descendants of slaves and of migrants. When we talk about slaves in Europe, it's about one of two millions of people were enslaved in Europe. And these people be part of the society. They were integrated by the violence, but they, but, but they become Europeans, which is not the case actually for the migrants. The frontiers are closed, but there is not only ge ge geographical frontiers. There are frontiers of identity. An African can't become an European 
as a white people. And I think the racism is it this basic question today. Migration is linked to racism and not only to inhumanity. Um, so maybe uh, it was my own answer to think about continuities, but differences in, in what become slaves and what become the descendant of migrants today in all societies. Sorry, I did not put my mic. So, uh, actually, we had a, a comment concerning your um, introduction, Antonio. Uh, Tandeka is uh, saying Antonio raises crucial concerns around the themes of heritage, race, and memory. So, how can we articulate those one today? And we have another question from Ruth. What, and I think we can link it, what happened to the fortresses that were a slave warehouse, such as Elmina, after slavery was abolished? So now we have also this uh, um, issue of heritage and uh, patrimonialization mm -hmm. of this history. So, Antonio, please. Okay, no, answer in a few in a few words. Yes, it's a very complex history because it's not Okay, it's to think ourself and, and myself as part of this history, not only as a white people, maybe as a descendant of master or as a descendant of a slave, which is very complex in this society because in the Portuguese society where I come from, everyone is white and Christian. <laughs> but we have to think that Africa built Portugal too. So, how oh, can you change the things? Is to, to see that in the cities, in the monuments, great part of the, uh, the things that you see, for example, in Lisbon, was built by African descendants and not only by the white people. And that in this society uh, where Africans arrived, they become part of them white people the change of coloration by the message. There is a great violence because great part of the slaves were forced to marry with white people, but they have descendants. And what is important is to think in the continuity of the life after the inhumanity. So it is very difficult to change the memory because the memory of Portugal was built on the great discoveries. It was a memory was rebuilt to think Portuguese as Europeans of more Europeans than the other Europeans. But when you look on the histories of lives of the people, what you can see, it's that the Portuguese come from all around the world and great part of the Portuguese come from Africa. So what will change the things is to have a, maybe a more positive vision of the African history. And I think it's the other way to think about a global system is to think that Africa, between the arrival of the Europeans, have a great history. And all the Africans were not slaves. And a great part of Africans who arrived in Europe were merchants too. And they were part of this history. So I think it's very complex because you have the official history, which is a question of identity. <laughs> and after, we have to build an, an, alter, an, alter, an alternative history, which is the history of the complexity of the humanity. Mm. Each one where we are very diverse and we come from great parts of histories. And we have to put all these histories at the same level, which is very complex because it's a, a way to think about yourself, where you come from. Um, I'm not sure what I want to at the question, but it was maybe you think about the complexity where you have an official history, including your personal history. And after you discover that there is another history. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, Salah, Juan, do you want to share, but to share with us your point of view? And then I, I think we will have to conclude because it is already 7.15 in Kenya. 
So, ça va, euh, Ouais. Oui. Euh, et tout simplement, je, je voudrais dire que, que euh, il faudrait que cette, euh, ce chapitre de, de cette histoire euh, puisse nous permettre donc de réhabiliter le rôle fondamental joué par les esclaves venus de toutes parts dans l'ensemble des sociétés d'accueil et tout particulièrement donc en ce qui concerne les sociétés que je connais le mieux, les sociétés arabo-musulmanes, euh, je prendrai un exemple, euh, celui justement qui est lié à l'agriculture et lié justement au captage de l'eau. On sait très bien que les pays du Maghreb, comme les pays du de la, de la, de Proche-Orient, sont des pays marqués essentiellement par l'aridité et la sécheresse, où recueillir de l'eau est un problème fondamental pour la vie de tous les jours et pour la prospérité des États. Or, quand on regarde l'histoire, justement, des empires arabes et de la plupart des États jusqu'au jusqu début du XXe siècle, quand on regarde toutes ces oasis et tous ces pays verdoyants qui ont, qui ont été, grâce au travail donc, des esclaves et au savoir-faire de ces hommes et de ces femmes, qui ont essentiellement excellé dans l'architecture de, de la captation de l'eau. Et quand on voit aujourd'hui, en effet, ce qui se rapporte aux oasis du sud de l'Algérie ou du sud de la Tunisie, du Maroc ou de la Libye, c'est que à 90%, ce travail a été fait par des esclaves et par des hommes venus d'Afrique et qui ont permis justement à ces sociétés d'être ce qu'elles sont aujourd'hui. Un autre élément est celui justement de la diversité humaine. Quand on regarde aujourd'hui la gamme de couleurs de l'ensemble des pays arabes, l'on voit pertinemment justement le rôle joué justement par cette, ce métissage et cet apport venu d'ailleurs et qui fait qu'aujourd'hui, justement, la mosaïque sociétale, elle est faite de toute cette histoire. Et c'est pour cela que nous repencher et nous remettre à étudier et à apprendre, à faire apprendre à nos enfants, à nos jeunes dans cette histoire-là, c'est aussi leur redonner une part d'eux-mêmes et une part de leur héritage donc, historique et de leur héritage, donc, humain et sociétal. Yeah. Juan, if you wish to, um, to, to, if you don't mind to translate. No, no, absolutely not. No, <laughs> and no, then no. after to, uh, to conclude as well on the, on yeah. the um, Thank you. Um, so, Salah says, at, um, I think, I, I hope that this uh, chapter of, of history uh, would allow us to rehabilitate the part that uh, the enslaved uh, Africans and the descendants uh, have played in our building our cultures. Uh, I'll take an example. Uh, in the Middle East or in the Maghreb, uh, uh, our very um, arid, uh, desert, um, dry uh, areas in the world. And you could say that most of the, 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 the oasis, uh, like let's say in the south of Algeria, in the south of Morocco, or in Libya, uh, all exist because of the, the work carried out by African slaves, enslaved Africans, um, that over the centuries, um, with uh, working with water, allowed these places to become green and, 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 uh, and um, For plants to grow, so that shows you the what we owe in some ways to to the contribution of enslaved Africans into our societies. Also, if you look at the diversity of, uh, I would call it the the color range of our societies in in the Middle East or in the Maghreb, you see clearly that uh, enslaved Africans and their descendants are an intrinsic part of the. What I would call the social mosaic 
of our society. And I think by teaching this history, um, we will also give uh, the young people in these countries, uh, we, we give them back a part of themselves by uh, telling them in a way where their society comes from and where they come from. Thank you very much. Okay, merci beaucoup, Juan. Do you want to add uh, on this issue of uh, heritage, uh, patrimonialization, maybe? Uh, then after, I, I will conclude. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. I mean, this is a very vast... Uh, every, it's, thank you for all these questions, because each of them it opens up uh, something we could spend uh, a few days talking about. I think um, what I told you at the beginning is that I think the... The temptation in the West and in Europe, I don't know about America, but is to say two things, is to say that history is in the past. This was very strong. Let's, why you keep talking about this? Let's turn the page, like I said, you know, let's move on. And the other side of it is that this is their history. And what I'm saying there, if you're Afro or if you're black, if you're white, somehow, we participated in it, but this is not our history. This is their history. I think what, what we try to put together with, the, with these films is to say that this is a, a history that is a shared history. Clearly, not all the actors play the same roles. And I'm not trying to say that everything evens uh, each other. But I think when, for example, European nations like Great Britain, France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and on and on, realize that this is our collective history and move on from just the guilt to a place of knowledge and to a place of understanding, then we can start to understand what uh, Salah or Antonio are talking about of this complex um, heritage space and and where different uh, moments, different population play uh, an integral part uh, into constructing it. So I think, you know, in France, the history of the slave trade is not a history that it just concerns the Caribbean or the, or the Réunion Island. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to most of the big cities in France today, you'll understand how they built. Um, if you so, yeah, I could go on for a long time, but uh, I think this 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 issue of a shared history, and I put shared without any kind of moral kind of perspective on it, uh, is very important. Okay, thank you very much, Ron. I I think uh, effectively that uh, this um, issue of uh, patrimonialization of these big monuments are very crucial. And uh, knowing that it uh, gives also some uh, touristical and economical inputs in the societies, and, uh, we, and th this uh, can be very much challenging. So, uh, Ari, thank you, uh, the three of you, also Arsita, Sabrina, and all the team of the Alliance Francaise, to have given us this chance to share with you. And uh, of course, uh, the company des Fari Ebalis, who have given us the rights to uh, show uh, the, the documentaries. So next week, we will have uh, the second part of um, this debate uh, around the, the two last part of the documentaries. Our panelists uh, will be Professor Ibrahim Atioub, who is the founder of the Centre Africain de Recherche sur les Esclavages et Traites, the CART. Uh, with the Vice Chancellor uh, of the University Sheikh Antadiop in Dakar. So we have uh, Professor uh, Catherine Kokrividrovich, who is a very well known uh, historian uh, of Africa and uh, who is the historical advisor of the documentary. And uh, we will have two uh, Kenyan colleagues. Professor Samuel Nianchoga from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa and uh, Mr. Patrick Abungu with the curator of Shimoni Slavery Museum in, uh, on the coast, mm -hmm. and uh, with whom we have been working uh, since 2008. So uh, you are most welcome. Uh, and uh, then 
um, Sabrine and uh, Arsita will put the link on the chat so you can join us uh, next week. So thank you very much and uh, good evening to you all. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Le Fouad. Merci à vous. <laughs>